If any of you made the mistake of turning your phones off, if you could undo that and turn them back on, please tweet amongst yourselves while I'm talking. I, I don't mind. All I ask is that you use the Lean Startup hashtag so you can join the worldwide conversation about these ideas that's happening 24 by 7. OK, so we want to talk about what is entrepreneurship and how can we make it better. I thought it'd be good to start off with what do we all believe about entrepreneurship? So can I get a quick show of hands? Who has seen the best entrepreneurship movie of all time? I'm not talking about the social network. I actually mean this one. Who's seen Ghostbusters? Quick show of hands. Yeah, OK, everybody. So you know the classic story of the entrepreneurs. If you think about Ghostbusters, sure, there's some supernatural occurrences, but mostly it's a business movie. You've got these guys in the lab. They come up with this great technology, too radical for their university. They get kicked out, and so they mortgage their house. They uh, get the building, the car, the TV ad. That's all act one of the classic entrepreneurship story. Who's the plucky protagonist? Uh, what's their character strengths and defects that will be interesting later? And does anyone remember what's happening right as they start to get down to their last dollar in the Ghostbusters house? They're literally the day they're about to run out of money, boom, in walks their first customer. Anyone remember why their first customer walked in? Well, I'll let you know. It's because Zool is invading Manhattan with extremely good timing, if you think about it. Because if Zool invades Manhattan a year later or a year earlier, I mean, we'd be, we'd be toast. Yet most entrepreneurs that I know are busy waiting for Zool, which we'll get back to. And then as soon as the first customer walks in, we can go straight into the act two of the entrepreneur story, which is the same in Ghostbusters or in the social network. I call it the photo montage. Generally lasts about two minutes long. There's no dialogue. And it's just you know, some guys pounding on computers or in the social network. You know, they have those cool pens you run on Windows on. Uh, they bust a few ghosts. They get a few customers. And boom, we can get on to the interesting stuff in Act 3, which is uh, being on the cover of magazines, who sues who, how we divide the spoils, what kind of car you drive. The exciting parts of entrepreneurship. Act 1, coming up with a cool idea, being in the right place at the right time. Act 3, how do we divide up the spoils? What I discovered the hard way as an entrepreneur is that actually every decision of any importance that affects the outcome of entrepreneurs happens during the photo montage in Act Two. So why doesn't it make it into the movies? It's because it's too boring. Think about what happens in Act Two. It's the most boring stuff imaginable. It's product prioritization meetings. We never see the Ghostbusters having a product prioritization meeting, but they must have had millions. Right? It's deciding which customers to listen to and which to ignore. It's excruciatingly boring. And look, I know right now entrepreneurship is cool and exciting and everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but the truth is actual entrepreneurship, not like it's in the movies, it's unbelievably boring, painful, and basically humiliating. So we want to talk about the boring part of entrepreneurship today. Are you with me? So here we go. I have this new book out uh, called The Lean Startup, and I wanted to talk about five principles from the book. First, entrepreneurs are everywhere. Entrepreneurship is management, validated learning, build, measure, learn, and innovation accounting. So I know you came for a cool talk about entrepreneurship, but now we're going to talk about management and accounting. So sorry about that. But I did forewarn you, right? So entrepreneurs are everywhere. If we're going to be more rigorous in the practice of entrepreneurship, it's important to start with a definition. So here's mine. A startup is a human institution designed to create something new under conditions of extreme uncertainty. It has nothing to do with how big your company is, as we just heard in the last session. It has nothing to do with what sector of the economy you work in. It only has to do with trying to create something new under these conditions of extreme uncertainty, which is a really fancy way of saying a startup is an experiment. But not, an experiment is not just you know, throw something on the wall and see what sticks. I mean experiment in the scientific sense, a hypothesis to be tested. And one of the things we try to do in entrepreneurship is reconceive everything that we do, every product feature, every marketing campaign, every customer we talk to, as an experiment designed to help us learn, are we on the path to a sustainable business? Which means that, unfortunately, entrepreneurship is management. But it's not this guy's management. And just as a handy tip, if you ever need to blame problems on anybody, it's helpful to pick somebody who's dead. Uh, so this is Frederick Winslow Taylor, who exactly 100 years ago invented the concept that we now call management. The management that we all studied in the 20th century that seems boring to us was actually unbelievably successful. It gave us all of the material abundance we have today. And the primary tools of that management were planning and forecasting. We all know that a manager who beats plan should be promoted and someone who does worse than plan should be fired. But planning and forecasting require a long and stable operating history from which to make an accurate forecast. And quick show of hands, who feels like the world is getting more and more stable every day? Yeah, ha, 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 right? Of course not. 
So why are we using tools that depend on stable operating environments to do the work of the 21st century that is much too uncertain? So we need a new kind of management. I call it entrepreneurial management. And the Lean Startup is an attempt to articulate that management paradigm. The most important concept in the toolkit of entrepreneurial management、uh, is this thing called the pivot. Anyone sick and tired of hearing about pivots already? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I apologize.、Uh, that I, I saw this the other day.、Uh, kid you not, in the New Yorker magazine. I'm not leaving you. I'm pivoting to another man. <laughs> So it's become a bit of a jargon buzzword. Sorry about that.、Uh, but the truth is, we can't say anything intelligent about entrepreneurship unless we have this concept in our vocabulary. Because if you look at the successful startups, they don't have better ideas than the unsuccessful ones. They have this very uncanny ability to, when they run into difficulty, pivot, move, keep one foot. Anchored in what they have learned, while moving the other foot, one other thing at a time. So they don't just give up and go home. Neither do they persevere the plane straight into the ground. And the premise of the lean startup is that speed wins. If we can extend, we can have a way to extend our runway without having to raise money simply by getting to each pivot sooner. Now, the unit of progress of entrepreneurship is this thing I call validated learning, scientific learning about if we're on the path to a sustainable business. By the way, most of the companies that I've built have failed, which I know is not how you're supposed to start one of these talks as a professional expert. But you know, anyone telling you the truth about entrepreneurship will be talking about failure, and the reason is because of this. Most of the time, startups are busy building something that nobody wants, and if we're building something that nobody wants, why are we so proud of having done it on time and on budget? See, when we make a plan and it's the wrong plan, and we successfully execute it, then we have achieved failure. It's like we're driving a car off a cliff, but we're bragging about the excellent gas mileage we get as we go over the side, over the side. And if you go back to the idea that a startup is an experiment, this way of thinking unlocks a new way of being more efficient in a startup. It's not about how do I make more stuff efficiently. We live in a time where we can make anything that can be imagined. So the question of our time is not can it be built, but should it be built? And by treating everything we do as an experiment, we can start to ask the question: Is there a faster way to learn what I need to learn, rather than just build this product? That is the key. In a previous company, I spent six months building a product. I was the chief technology officer, so I cranked out this code. It was buggy and you know barely worked, and I was really embarrassed to ship it. And I almost didn't have the courage to put it out there, but I was like, well, I, I got to try it. So I shipped it, and I was really worried about what would happen. But turned out I was relieved because nobody would even download it. So nobody even found out how bad it was. And so at first I was relieved, like, well, phew, at least nobody found out my reputation is safe. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Why did I just spend the last six months of my life building something that nobody wants? I did it agile. It was very lean. It was all very efficient. It wasn't asking the right question. And as a result, most of us who are building startups are busy wasting people's time on an industrial scale, and it has to stop. Now, not you. I understand your startup is fine, but maybe the person to your left or the person to your right. <laughs> Ask yourself, how do you know for sure that you're making progress? And that really is the really difficult question. That entrepreneurs face. How do I know if I'm making progress? Because every day when I go home at night as an entrepreneur, what can I say for sure? I know for sure that I kept people busy. I know for sure that we hit product milestones. We made stuff. But how do I know if I'm making progress? So we need a concept that can help us do, make that evaluation. And so we call it the build, measure, learn feedback loop. Here it is. A startup is nothing more that turns a cat. There's nothing more than a catalyst that turns ideas into products. And then customers interact with those products, enabling us to learn. And everything we do as a startup should be geared towards optimizing our total time through this feedback loop, going through it as quickly as possible. And there are a lot of specific techniques that、uh, are part of the Lean Startup. You can read the book or the blog to learn all about these. Each of these techniques has the、uh, local effect of allowing us to build or measure or learn faster, but I believe also has the net effect of optimizing total time. But I promised that I would talk about accounting because I know we're all very excited about this very boring topic. And so I just want to mention one more concept from the book, which is this really deep problem of how do I know if I'm making progress? We like to laugh at the corporate CFOs that are constantly crushing startups when they buy them and constantly destroying and demoralizing internal innovation teams. We laugh at those people like, gosh, they don't know what they're doing. But the truth is, they have a really deep problem because an entrepreneur comes to you and says, "Hey, give me a million dollars in a year, and I will come back and promise you tons and tons of customers." And flash forward a year later, what do we know for sure? We know for sure that the money got spent. Right, the money always got spent, but there probably isn't the kind of traction and success that was promised. And so, how can、uh, a CFO? How can the person who's supposed to hold the entrepreneur accountable? How can they tell the difference between a team that is on the brink of success 
or one that has spent the last year goofing off. Our current tools can't tell the difference. We're not talking about A minus versus B plus, cannot tell the difference between abject failure and the brink of success. And so innovation accounting is an attempt to get us off of these product and business milestones towards learning milestones. So those are the five principles of the Lean Startup. I left a bunch of questions unanswered. I did that intentionally, of course, because uh, I hear there's this really great book that just came out. Thank you all very much. Please be in touch. Thank you.